The reasons behind the purchase of a centre pivot or lateral move are varied, but most often are based on their ability to deliver precise amounts of water as required and their ability to deliver high returns per megalitre of water. Reduced labour input, reduced turnaround time enabling greater cropping opportunities and the ability to irrigate ground unsuitable for far irrigation are three other reasons that often feature in the decision to purchase a centre pivot or lateral move machine. I think um, from my experience firstly is, is the water source has a bit to do with it. Um, you know if people have bores um, that's certainly a trigger for people to use overhead irrigation like this and then for guys that uh, have river licenses and storages then it's a it's a more of a water use efficiency and moving away from surface irrigation to a different type um, those guys are usually more yeah, they're used to surface irrigation and, and they're developing country usually and looking at a way to develop it um, with less development yeah less land development but also improve water efficiency has been the major major trigger point I've seen and the opportunity to run different farming systems under it compared to a surface irrigation which builds in on the water use efficiency really. All the guys are converting their dry land and also some converting their flood. The bonus is that um, on the old flood systems there is a water saving and you, you don't think about the saving so much but with a flood system if you wanted to irrigate you had to think about it a couple of days in advance and you know a cotton crop gets on a what they call a, a wheel tour or a, there's a there's an actual time that you need to irrigate and if you've got a rain event coming you still have to start your flooding because if you if the rain event doesn't happen then you're going to end up missing that cycle and you're going to be playing catch me up and that's going to that's going to affect your yield so what we um, what the what the farmers do with the the laterals is they can do a nice light pass and if the rain event doesn't, doesn't happen, they can actually do another pass back. So that's a more efficient use of the water and they're not flooding the paddocks twice. You know, you're not getting a rain event and also flood. So yeah, that's, it's becoming a better management tool. When it got back to just water, we, our allocation being reduced, it was sort of would be unviable to, to try and irrigate much here with 110 megalitres or 112 megalitres of water. So we investigated into lateral moves or uh, overhead systems to um, see how much we, more we could do and by just talking to salespeople and, and we had looked at them some 30 years ago up at a Bundaberg in the cane industry and they were indicating they were doing better with the overheads and it just seemed logical that you could control the water better and you should be able to spread it further. So that's the reason why we looked at and problem for a long time was how do you fit it into a farm um, you, you sort of we had little small 50 acre blocks that were irrigating and with head ditches everywhere and you middle of the night one night you wake up with a bright idea and say well if I got rid of all that and do that I can put one there that runs two kilometres and I can cover nearly 400 acres with it so that was the that was the main factor was where do I fit it into a farm around ring tanks power lines buildings etc until I worked had a vision one night that's about how it came. Got up in the morning and said, yep, we can do that. And we went from there. The number one motivation was um, uh, soil movement and sediment movement uh, from the furrow system. The, the grade, on the, the, grade on, the, on the land was quite steep and we were getting a lot of uh, silt and um, sediment deposit into our surge areas. And have, every year we had uh, um, you know, a lot of costs on having to remove that silt. Um, so that was one of the motivations. Um, uh, second to that was to be developing a farming system under it under that um, pivot that allowed um, sort of a minimum till type system to, to reduce you know runoff as well and one of the things that's come out of the, the pivot that's probably been probably the most exciting from our point of view is the labour savings. Um, you, we've seen a real uh, from a normal irrigation scheduling to, to irrigate the farm uh, with that bit of country under pivot now we've saved ourselves about an hour and a half every day during the irrigation season and that's been a, a substantial saving. There are two basic types of overhead machines. Centre pivots irrigate in a circle around a permanent fixed point. There are also towable systems which can be relocated. Centre pivots can also be used to irrigate a partial circle. Centre pivots can be fitted with a swing arm 
to fully irrigate square fields. Lateral moves are designed to irrigate rectangular fields. This may more readily suit existing farm layout than centre pivots. Water can be supplied by channel or buried mainline connected to a drag hose. Lateral moves can irrigate larger areas than centre pivots but do require relatively flat ground compared to that required by pivots. The lateral move can be designed to pivot at the end of each run. This is referred to as a racetrack design. Capital cost. In many situations there is little difference between the capital cost of overhead machines and fur irrigation infrastructure. Sometimes landforming may not be required under overhead systems. However, often some work is necessary to reduce runoff and avoid pooling. Operating cost and energy requirements. Compared to surface gravity based furrow irrigation, overhead machines consume more energy. Reduced labour. Although influenced by a range of factors including the machine design, the degree of automation and the water supply system, reduced labour requirements are typically associated with centre pivot and lateral move irrigation in comparison to furrow irrigation. Fertigation. Overhead machines enable timely, uniform application of nutrients to meet crop needs. This ability often eliminates some tillage operations and therefore reduces potential for crop damage. Cropping opportunities. Greater control over irrigation provides increased cropping opportunities. Irrigation application efficiency. Overhead machines are capable of achieving excellent application efficiencies due to the degree of control they provide. They are recognised as one of the most efficient and best performing irrigation systems. Skills requirement. Efficient operation of centre pivots require the adoption of new irrigation techniques like scheduling and fertigation. Yeah, I guess our, the first motivation with, with any of these machines is saying, well, we're going to save water and, and all the literature and everything said you will save 30% of your water. And our experience so far hasn't been that water saving is what it's about. Uh, what we've found is it's about the rotations, being able to put crops in quicker, the labour savings, um, the precision application of the water to increase yields, rather than saving the water. Um, the paddock that we've ended up, the two paddocks we've ended up, one was a difficult one to irrigate. It had a l large number of stops in it and uh, it was an odd shape so it was difficult to irrigate with flood. The second uh, overhead irrigator went on new country, so it was in a flood area that was also difficult to flood irrigate. So that was sort of the, the reason for those two paddocks being chosen to start with for the overhead irrigators. We had country that was sloping and we wanted to irrigate it. We were flood irrigating and it was just too much, too much slope. So the first machine went in as a hose drag on that sloping country and after 18 months seeing the benefits, we then progressed to put the others in on the, on the flat river country. And each machine was designed for the way it fitted in to the farming paddock. And some machines fitted different swing arounds, fitted in paddocks better than what straight laterals. So it was designed to fit into the paddocks, that's really why they're all different, yes. Pivot could realistically, a pivot can go anywhere. Yep. Um, there's not too many, uh, too much country a pivot can't, well I don't actually know of any country you can't put a pivot. Um, and if you compare, um, if the comparison was uh, pivot to flood irrigation, um, then your pivot is probably, well I don't really know a great deal about the flood side of it, um, it doesn't interest me because of the high labour mm -hmm. um, involved in it. Um, However, um, you'd probably, I don't know, how to, where you'd look at country for flooding, it'd have to be a lot more flatter, it'd have to be oh, planed and, yeah. and so forth. Where, and you still have to get your country right underneath the pivot. We're still, that's a pro work in progress here. Okay. Um, but you still have to have that country, you can't have hollows as such, because the pivot will end up, you'll, you'll end up with stuck pivots and right. so forth. 
on pivots, higher application rates on outer spans can lead to poor infiltration and surface runoff. This limits their maximum size. Lateral moves better fit existing rectangular fields. The circular operation of pivots means area can be lost to the corners. Water delivered by underground main to centre pivots is less complex than lateral move delivery systems. Laterals draw water from open channels or hydrant fed hose. Lateral moves have more complex guidance systems. Generally, centre pivots require less labour than lateral moves. Centre pivots can be relatively easier to manage as typically ground is dry in front of the machine. If you're an already existing flood irrigator it's, and your paddocks are set up that way, a lot of them like seeing that water running in channels so they're probably more set up for linears. Um, but if you get a new grower that's um, either coming out of a bore or a dam, uh, a pivoter is a lot simpler system for, that cust for the customer. Um, the linear is a little bit more uh, intensive. You've got to be there, monitor and babysit them with a pivot. You just hit a button and walk away. So, yeah, it's depending on the farmer how smart he is or, or how, wh whether he wants to be there and go to the coast. That's kind of, you've got to work out what, whether they're going to have to sit there and actually physically babysit the thing or not. There's definitely, there's definitely more pressure um, from flood irrigation farmers for laterals because the design of their farms is already in, in squares and they like the straight lines and they don't want to lose, lose country. However, that, the, the other side of that though is economics in that those tend to be driven by the type of crop that they're growing. So if that crop in particular is, is um, having poor prices for that season, for example, we'll see the demand for the laterals will drop right off because they've already spent an enormous amount of money in the development of the irrigation infrastructure on their farm, which exists there now, to go ahead and now spend more money on top of that becomes a bit of pill to swallow if you're not getting the commodity prices.